to give a shout in the house, everybody. Has he given you the victory? Glory to God. Let's all lift our hands all over this place and speak in tongues on top of your voice all over this place. God, you don't need me. But somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to be doing this morning. We're going to be putting everything in God's hand. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching you how to do that this morning. So, when I will round up this teaching, I'm going to go back to that song. Hallelujah. You know the song, right? Let's take it again. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life. And where you should go. Let's do it again. See, go. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. be close we're going to do that song that part that says here am i all my intentions all my obsessions hallelujah i want to lay them all down we're going to do that song we'll be grounding up this morning but all over this please just lift your hands up father thank you spirit of jesus i turn this service over to you let there be a mighty move of your spirit let every word that comes from my mouth be prophetic meeting every need in the name of jesus let no one live here without a definite answer, definite word to solve his or her problem. Thank you, Father, for those beautiful words. I ask that this will be our best service yet. You anoint me this morning to stand in the office of a prophet and a teacher. I will have a mighty, mighty move of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Give God a shout all over this place. Hallelujah. Help me welcome your neighbor to the first Sunday in March. Or do we say the first Sunday in Shalom? Welcome back to the month of Shalom. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to share with us very quickly this morning. Hallelujah. I'm teaching on some that what I count very important. I titled it Unwavering. Hallelujah unwavering and there's a teaching on the need and the how to trust God even when it's not it, it's not easy amen did you, did you hear those testimonies this morning you know we we have not um We've not started celebrating what God is doing among us as we should. But those were very powerful testimonies this morning. Of course, you should know, one of those cases was a clear case of satanic oppression. We, and I want to emphasize on that for a reason. We had someone who just wake up in the night and start running and then tear her clothes into pieces. Amen. And the, the interesting thing about that testimony, why I'm pointing it out is she decided to come to church on Thursday. Amen. And then she came to church on Thursday and she went home and she was fine. You know, when she sends that testimony, um, what was just going on through my mind 
I was trying to recall Thursday service to see if we, I prayed about that. Amen. I was checking, did I pray about that? Was there a time I declared and said, oh, if you have any, if you used to wake up and run, it's coming to an end. And there was no time. Of course, we were teaching about the shepherd that Thursday, if you remember. Of course, I know I say things about how shepherd keeps us safe and all that, but I can't remember praying about that. But then, right in that service, because it was high expectation, it was met. You know, one thing you should realize is that whenever we come to church, something is happening. And, see, let me tell you, the anointing responds to needs. Have you, have you heard me say that before? It responds to needs. Let me say this to you. Even if I came into this meeting with intention just to teach, but then there is someone here who has a need, who has a financial need. The anointing is going to respond to that need and meet it. The Bible tells us that Jesus was somewhere preaching and the power of God was present to heal. Do you know why the power of God was present to heal? Because there were sick people in that place. Whenever there is a need, the anointing will respond. That, that leads me to say that you don't play with services. You don't miss services. For every time you are in God's presence, something is happening. On Thursday, there was no time we did power move and people fell down. There was nobody that fell down. There was no time we prayed and said, oh, so the power of God moved. And, but then, she went home and she was fine. Things happen in church, whether you know it or not. And that's why when you come to church, you must keep your full focus. Are you following me? Keep your focus. And get the best out of it. This morning, I'm teaching on unwavering. Hallelujah. It's an instruction that God gave me. And I'm going to challenge you throughout this month. To trust God. These are familiar grounds. But you know, anytime I begin to teach on what you might call familiar grounds. What I've taught again and again. I tell you what you should do. You should pay extra attention. Are you getting me? You know, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul wrote to the Philippian church. He told them that to write. say rejoice again. I say rejoice. He said to write the same things to you. He said to me indeed it's not grievous. In other words, he's saying what I'm about to share with you in this letter is not something you've not heard before. He said it's not even grievous to me. I'm not feeling bad. I'm not feeling like a bad pastor for sharing the same things with you. Now he made an, the next thing he said for you it is what? It is what? Safe. So it is safe for a pastor to repeat himself again and again. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I'm going to go through these lines again, but I would like you to know, once I begin to repeat myself, you should expect that you will hear things where you've not heard them before. So I'm teaching on, I'm going to challenge you to trust God today. I'm teaching on trust and unwavering, to have that unwavering trust in God. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him and shall direct thy paths. So we are commanded, we are instructed to trust God. To trust God is to depend and rely on him completely. To trust him is to rely, to depend on him completely. It is to acknowledge him as the source and the sustainer of all things. That's what it means to trust God. And I'd like you to know that it's a culture that we must cultivate. You know, I was talking to the leaders on Monday. And I told them something. Was it this last Monday? And I told them, when we read the Bible to the passerby, he can treat it as, you know, as pastor was preaching, he advised us to do this. To the member in church, he should treat it as pastor instructed us to do this. But to the leader and the mature Christian, which is what he must be, he must treat it as a command. Pastor commanded us to do this. I get to the point. In other words, when you read the Bible, the, the normal Christian will say, well, the Bible just says we should trust God. Another commit, slightly committed person will say, well, the Bible instructed us to trust God. But he must treat it as a command. I am commanded to trust God. Are you following me? That's how I treat the Bible. When I read the Bible and I see 
you go into the world and make steps of all nations. I don't treat it like an advice. I don't treat it like an instruction. I treat it like a command. Are you following me? When the Bible said, neglect not the gathering of the saints, as you see the dad preaching, must always be in church. I don't treat it as an advice. It's a command. And the response to a command is yes, sir. Are you following me? So this morning I'm commanding us and instructing us, however it comes to you, to trust God with all your heart. Even when it is difficult. Even when it is difficult. In Psalm 37 and verse 5. We're going to look, look at a lot of things from the book of Psalm today. Psalm 37 verse 5. He said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring you to pass. Learn to commit thy way is an instruction. Commit your way. Learn to trust God. And these are the things we say all the time. Oh, trust the Lord. Trust Jesus. I trust God. But then, when the die is cast, we begin to question whether we really trust him. In Psalm 125 and verse 1. Psalm 125 and verse 1. He said, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. Say, that's me. He said, Which cannot be removed, but abide dead forever. So, if you trust the Lord, say, You shall be like Mount Zion. In other words, it makes you unshakable. I'm going to come to all this later. When you trust the Lord, you can't be shaken. So you must have that unwavering, you must cultivate the habit of having that unwavering, undaunted trust in God and the God of your salvation. Amen. You know, there are times when it can appear so hard to trust God. But I can tell you, when it appears hard to trust God, that is when you must dare to trust Him even more. When it appears difficult to trust God, that's when you must go the, the extra mile to ensure that you trust Him. That's when you must go the extra mile to ensure that your trust in Him is unwavering. I give you some examples of those times. Most times, when people are in difficult situations, it proves difficult, it, it proves hard to trust God. But I tell you, that is when the man should go the extra mile to make sure he trusts God the more. And a man that spoke about that in the Bible was David. In Psalm 46 verse 1. He tells us of how hard it can be to trust God in difficult times. But then how he has decided that no matter the troubles around him, that's when he will try to trust God the more. Look at the screen. He said, God is our refuge and strength. A present help in trouble. Look at verse 2. Therefore, we will we, we, not we fear. Though the earth be removed. Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Are you following me? Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, he said, No matter what happens, I'm going to take God as my refuge. And so, when you are in challenging situations, that is when the devil wants to make you want to trust God, but that's when you must go the extra mile to trust Him. When you've just failed an exam, when you just fell sick, when you just lost some money, when things are not moving as you planned, that is when the devil comes to question your trust. And that is where you must go the extra mile to trust him. And that is when it is difficult to trust God is when there are uncertainties. When there are uncertainties, when you do not know what to expect. When you are filled with so much anxiety. When there is fear and worry. You don't know what to expect. Who knows what is going to happen tomorrow? Who knows what is going to happen next week? There are so much uncertainties around me. Listen, that is when you should even trust him the more. You know, in Psalm 56 and verse 3. You know, Psalm 56 and verse 3. You know, the psalmist said, what time I am afraid? What will I do? I will trust in thee. When there is fear, that's when I will trust him. You see, if you are at this point in your life, when you are so uncertain, you don't know what to do. You don't know what is going to happen next. Some of you are at that spot where you just finished school. You don't know what next to do. What if that happens? What if that doesn't happen? I'm so uncertain. I'm so afraid. I'm so anxious. That is when to put more of your trust in him. That's not when to waver. That's not when to give up. That's when to trust him even the more. Hallelujah. And I love the way um, and NLT says, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Hallelujah. Amplify said, what time I am afraid, I will have confidence in and put my trust and reliance in you. See, if you are this part of your life where there is so much fear, so much uncertainty, so much anxiety, you don't even know what is coming next, you don't know what to expect, it's like your life is at a spot where you don't know whether to move forward or move forward back, backwards, there's so much uncertainty. That is when you should make up your mind, okay, it's time to trust God the more. I mean, when you've received that doctor's report, saying, well, we don't know if you ever walk again. 
We don't know if your heart will ever work again. We don't know if you're going to live for past the next three years. We are seeing three months, you are gone. When such ones, when you don't know what to expect out of life, that is when to even trust God the more. I follow him. I want to trust him the more. I can tell you another difficult time for people to trust God. It's when they have failed in quotes. I put it failed. Failed prayer requests. I mean, when you prayed about a thing, you fasted about it, you trusted God about it, and then it did not happen. That is when you even trust him the more. Because these are certain times in our lives that the devil will just come to let you feel like, oh, well, you prayed. Did you not pray? You fasted. Did you not fast? Pastor prophesied. Did he not prophesy? You declared. Did you not declare? After all of that, what happened? You replied, the devil, that's when I will trust God anymore. And we see an example again in the life of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 15, David had prayed that the son will not die. Let's read, let's look at it. Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and he was very sick. So the child was sick. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted. So what did he do? He fasted. Amen. So he was praying. He fasted. And went in and lay all night upon the earth. So the man prayed all night. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. So he didn't get up. He didn't eat. He was praying. And he came to pass on the seventh day. How many times? How many days? How many days did he pray and fast? Seven days. On the seventh day, the child died. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard what looks like a failed prayer? Prayer request. <laughs> you know, after you have those things, then the next days you come to church and pastor is saying, oh God cannot fail. He cannot lie. You're just watching him and say, show the wine me. <laughs> you know, the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he will not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself? In other words, I'm thinking, this guy did not eat when the child was alive. If we now go tell him that the child is dead, he might just kill himself. So they were being careful not to tell him, okay? When David saw that the servant whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Well, he will perceive he was praying. Therefore, David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Now, stay here. Go back to that verse. Now, if you were, what were you going to expect David to do? It's time to go and begin to ask God, why? What kind of God are you? You know, these are challenging things. And I would like you to know that if you have had such situations, I have some explanations, I might. And I might not even have some explanations to you. But that's when to strengthen your trust in God. Are you following me? Because what the devil comes for when such things happen, he comes for your faith. He comes for your trust in God. Do you know the challenge, the problem with that? By the time maybe you're trusting God for 10 naira, and then the 10 naira did not come as you expected, and you now give up, a bigger need is coming tomorrow where you have to trust God for a million. But because you've given up because you didn't get 10 naira, you've even lost the faith and the trust with which to express the next thing that is coming. Are you following me this morning? Don't fall for that. So see what happened? Let's get together, everybody. David arose from the earth and washed. And, and you know what anointed means? What does it mean? He rubbed cream. That's what it means. I've explained that to you, Abi. Uh, it's not every way you see anointed in the Bible that it means fire. Or it means the power of God. Yeah, he rubbed cream. And changed his apparel. And came into the house of the Lord. And worshipped. Wow. You are praying for your child not to die. And then your child dies. You start worshipping. That's what I call on wavering trust. I get to the point. Hallelujah. Then he came to his own house. And when he required that they said before him, he did it. So he ended the fast as they eat. Listen, eh, there, are, there can be many reasons. If you read, have you read prayer first? There can be many reasons why you pray and you didn't see the answers to your prayer as you prayed them. A couple of reasons. I can't discuss all of them now. I won't even have time to discuss them. But get prayer first. The book is out there. It will answer your questions. So maybe, you know, sometimes we didn't pray right. Sometimes, you know, God has taken. And, you know, you, how do you expect that woman to see God? So God came, saw people that had three children, people that had five children, and came and took her only child. 
That's not an answer to give to, to people that have lost their loved ones. God does not take. I get to the point. God is not a wicked God. So, and Womack said that when he gets those situations, he might not know what to say. He will just tell them, Madam, I, I don't know why your child died. I don't know why this happened. I don't even have an explanation and I cannot even claim that I understand how you feel. You know, we say those things to make people feel good. Sometimes you really don't understand how they feel. I get to the point. I can't claim I understand how you feel. But I know one thing. I know that God is good. I know that God loves you. And I know that somehow he's going to make things right. That's a comforting answer. I get to the point. It's not come as I say, nah, God has given, or maybe it's because your father sinned. That's why he, he died. Or that is because you guys did not pray enough. That's not the time for all of that. So David stood up and ate. He went, the first thing that challenged me in these verses, he went and worshipped. That you're worshipping who? A God you've been praying to for seven days and then your child finally dies and then the first thing you do is go to, say, Father, thank you. It's called unwavering trust. Are you following me this morning? And that's the point you need to get. Some of us are so driven and moved by our experiences. Oh, we believe that God is good because he has provided a house for us. And when there is no car, we believe that God is now wicked. You must have that trust in God. Now, see the next verse. Next verse. He, he ate. Then said the servants unto him, what, what thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. When the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. Okay, and he said, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that a child may live? Okay, but now he's dead. Therefore, should I fast? Can I bring him back again? Now, there are some things, I don't think I have time to explain this, but you see one of David's confidence, why he didn't cry so much. I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. It seems David was so sure of where the child went to. And not so much that he will go to where the child has gone to. Are you guys following me? He said, I am sure I will go to him one of these days. Well, let's continue. Verse 24. Now, that's why Paul will tell us that we should not mourn like men that have no hope. If we know where the dead has gone to, we are so sure that saved is enough comfort. Now, David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son. So, immediately after that, she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. Verse 25, I'm going to stop there. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidah because of the Lord. So look at the next person that now came was Solomon, who finally became the heir to David's throne. Now what I'm saying is, sometimes when there are failed prayer requests in court, the devil wants to keep you down, wants to keep you in despair. What you don't realize is that there is something else that is coming that is better than what was lost. And that's not the time to stay down. That's the time to put in the extra work to trust God. To trust God even more. Another, you know, and we should know that another difficult time, see related to this, to trust God, is when there are dashed hopes, dashed expectations. You're expecting. Sometimes it's just very close to the breakthrough. And all your hope was dashed. Has it ever happened to you? You know, you're expecting that this was this is the final. But you're even rejoicing already. And then I, somebody was telling me of how he was expecting some money. The people already said they would pay. He has already sent a account number. He has even gone to price a car. I'm telling you, he's going to price a car that he's going to buy. After everything, and the next one, he was not calling them. Amen. So I was in my, in my office last week. I was just, just with me. How that some people already wanted to buy a property he wanted to sell. He, they already agreed. The price was fixed. I think the price was fixed at around 5 million or so. And then, suddenly, they now came the day they wanted to make payments and said, we are no longer paying 5 million. They began to offer something very low. When there are dashed hopes and expectations, Satan wants to make you feel, why are you even trusting God again? But can I challenge you, that is when to even trust him the more. That's when to trust him the more. Psalm 43 and verse 5. David was in that kind of situation. And I love what he said. He said, when, why, he began to talk to himself. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hallelujah. 
Then I said, for I shall yet praise him. Glory to God. Who is the health of my countenance and my God. So when there is trouble, my soul, don't be downcast because I will yet praise this God. Are you following me, church? Probably I can tell of this. I will yet praise him. I will yet praise him. He said, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my trust in, my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. You know, when there are dash tops, it's time to praise God again. Are you following me this morning? When there are dash tops, what do you do again? You praise again. When the answer did not come as expected, you praise again. Are you going to praise again this morning? And I used to share this story with you many years ago, on a couple of years back now, how many years ago, we, we had venue challenge, you know, when church was in a student church around that one. We had venue challenge and all that. So we left, we have moved from where we were staying. So we, we had to rent or lease a plot of land. We leased the land and started to erect a structure there. So we began to work on the structure. How many of you came to that place, man? a couple of years now, put up a structure and we used all our money and our future money to put up that structure. <laughs> Amen. Like all our money and the money we are going to get tomorrow. So after, we, and you don't think, you think it's block. Wood. Mm -hmm. God has helped also. And I'm going to challenge you now closing. You see, uh, when God wants to do a thing, it always starts small. If you want to work with God, be used to small beginnings. Are you following me, George? So how many were we? A couple of us. So we said that we are doing, and then we put up that, directed the structure. The issue was now how to roof it. We went for zinc, we couldn't afford zinc. We said, okay, fine, let's get tarpaulin. That's a couple of years now. So God went for tarpaulin and then we covered it. You needed to see the joy in the house when we covered that place. So the first service we held there, I thought on the reports. Have you listened to that message? Who has believed our report? Isaiah 53. After teaching nice time, we had Tuesday service. Then we were meeting on Tuesday, not Thursday then. So now on Sunday, glory to God, that the next Sunday, I, I prepared a powerful message to preach. And I, I wanted to preach on my topic that morning was when faith seems fake. That's kind of what I'm teaching on this morning. When faith seems fake. So, we are coming to church in the morning. We, we are in church on Saturday to put the place in order. Everything was fine. We arrived on now, throughout that Saturday night, it rained heavily. And then by the time we arrived on Sunday morning, the rain had brought down our cathedral. <laughs> so, half of the place had fallen in and the woods were broken and so I, I came and I stood for some minutes. Amen. Well, we went in there and held our service. It was still raining in service, so rain was falling on us. The rain that had gathered on the tarpaulin was still dropping, dripping in the service. A lot of things happening and I was preaching on when faith seems fixed. So it was a perfect message for that morning. <laughs> but you see, that's going to praise him even more. That's not when to just begin to, you know, a pastor shared a story of how, <laughs> how, you know, when they started a church lady in that morning to buy instruments, they have instruments. And finally, uh, they did his father's burial, and then people came to, you know, count condolence, condolence, and all that, got that money. So he used all that money to buy sound for their church, buy gen, bought gen, bought sound, and all that. Glory to God. And they brought it to the church before the next Sunday service, they stole it. <laughs> Glory to God! <laughs> so, so imagine coming to church ready to, to blast the world. They told every generator, these people, everything, microphone. Hallelujah. You know, I tell you what, Satan wants to dash your hope. When he dashes your hope, he wants to steal your praise. David said, I will yet praise him. Are you following me? Probably like amplified of this verse. I will yet praise him. Bad things should not happen. We pray they shouldn't happen. 
But when we expect and we do not get what we expected, that's going to even praise him much more. There can be many reasons. When we get to a teaching like that, I'm going to explain to you many reasons. Okay, when I teach on prayer specifically, I can give you many reasons why, many wrong things we do that bring about some of these uh, goals being dashed and all that. But, before you begin to consider what you did wrong or what you didn't do wrong, it's time to yet praise him. Are you church this morning? Why you cast down all my inner self? Why should you mourn over me and, and be disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hallelujah. And wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, who is the help of my sad countenance and my God. So you praise him. So when there are dashed hopes, we are tempted to stop trusting. Make it. With him, I know I can stand. You know, I feel like saying someone, God feels the things you feel. There is someone I'm seeing, he's a, he's a guy that is sick. And the sickness is such that the doctor said it cannot be cured. The person I'm talking about is he's not very he's not a very committed member here. The doctor said it cannot be cured. Somewhere in this meeting, the hand of God is going to come upon you strongly. And the God that has never filled this ministry will not fail you. <laughs> and I'm seeing the person again. If the Lord permits me, I'm going to point to the person when the time comes. If the Lord permits me, because I've already spotted the person in this in this service. Let's sing it again. I know that I can make it. Come on, sing. No matter what, no. With Jesus, I can make it. With Jesus, with Him, I know I can stand. No matter what. Come on, with Jesus I can make it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what, no matter what may come my way. One last time, let me just think it. With Jesus I can make it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Sit for a moment, just stay prayed up. The atmosphere of this meeting just changed. He knows, he feels your pain. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, it tells us, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Proper NLT. NLT says, This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same things we do. Yet he did not say. So the things you feel, the pains you feel, Jesus loves you and he feels them too. And because he feels that he has good plans towards you, you can dare to trust him. Say, Mr. I trust God. Another reason why you can trust him is because he is consistent in his ways. He is consistent in his character as a good God. No, the most, the one major reason why we cannot trust men is because men are not consistent. Someone can be happy today and start tomorrow. But God is consistent. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, 
He said, I am the Lord, I change not. He said, for that reason, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Because he's consistent in his character as a good God. We can trust him. He's a good God. He doesn't do evil. He will not hurt you. You can dare to commit your life to this man because he cannot hurt you. Let me even say, he doesn't have the capacity to hurt you even if he wants to hurt you. He doesn't. James 1 verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Lord. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted any man. So God cannot tempt men with evil. Verse 17 tells us that every good and every perfect gift cometh from him. So somebody is asking me, why should I put all my trust in this God? The man is, the guy is good. Always good. Will never stop being good. Has always been good. I cannot hurt you. Cannot do evil. I follow me. It's easy to trust a man that is consistent. A man that you can tell what he will do tomorrow. A man that you are sure is not going to wake up from the bathroom of the bed and hit you tomorrow. You see why we can't, we can't trust men? Men are not consistent. Somebody can promise you money tomorrow and next tomorrow he says, I'm not giving you again. But you see with God, he's consistent. He's always been good. He will always be good. What he does for A, he will do for B. What he will not do for B, he will not do for any man. And that's how he is. Consistent in all, in all his ways. Good to a fault. In all his ways. So because we serve a consistently good God, we can dare to trust him. Number three, we can trust him because he has integrity. His word has never failed. His word can never fail. When he speaks a thing, that which he has said must come to pass. That which he has said cannot fail and will not fail. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. What he has promised you will never fail. What he has said to you will never fail. It can take time, but he will not fail. He will not go back on his word. In Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10. Isaiah 55 verse 10. I've been enjoying this scripture for, for like two days now. He said, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it br bring forth and board that he may give it to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. He shall accomplish that which I, I please. He shall prosper in the thing which I sent it to do. So when God sends his word, his words cannot come back to him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. So the things he has said to you, the reason, in fact, the things we call dashed hopes, I heard from the Holy Ghost, are not actually dashed hopes. They are delayed hopes. Because you feel the hope is dashed because one channel closed. If the hope was not dashed, a channel will just close. Many more channels will open up. Because the source is still there. When the word of God goes forth, it must fulfill why it has gone forth. It must fulfill why it has gone forth. I told myself yesterday, I must be a living proof. A living proof to the fact that God's word can never fail. And I'm already proving it. But you see, this year, I'm asked to prove it the more. Hallelujah. He sends me to Enugu. He said, go with nothing and I will prosper you in that land. He said, go with only your Bible and you have everything you need. I'm here to prove that that word will not fail and has never failed. And we are here to prove that everything God has said to us will come to pass. Now, because the man has integrity, he has fidelity, you can trust him. I follow me, church. Why do I have that unwavering trust in him no matter how long it takes? This man, his words do not fail. Who is following me this morning? His words, so a man that his words can never fail. Why should I doubt him? Hebrews 10, verse 23. You know, God was teaching me about trust recently. And in one of the things he told me, he said, Why do we find it difficult to trust God? Who we know. Even though we claim we know little about him. But then, we trust men that we don't know. How do you know you trust men that you don't know? Has ever flown on, on an airplane here? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. 
Yeah. Now, the day you were about to fly, have you, have you, the pilots that have flew you, or that flew the plane, <laughs> that, did, you, did, did you see him? Do you know him? Some of the, the, some of the airlines will announce his name, right? Are you sure he graduated from from aviation school? What if he escaped? He just what if it was a dropout? Okay, you if you ever enter the bread the vehicle from Enugu to, to wherever. How are you sure that driver does not have a problem? How are you sure he even knows how to drive? Are you sure he does not have Parkinson's disease? That as he's driving, he's like, are you sure? But you just go and pay and then trust your entire life in the hands of a man you've never seen. Are you following me, church? A man you've never seen from anywhere. No, that some of them, after you enter, you just see the man. Once the man just moves the car, you start praying. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no. Those days when I, used to, when I, I was using public transport, this man, they live in, it was in the night, around 8. Just, the only thing I noticed was I wasn't seeing front. The, the car doesn't have light. The man is an old man, he's not seeing well. So once a car flashes light, we park for the car to pass. And I spoke to the Lord that day, said, Lord, <laughs> if only you can take me to where I'm going to. <laughs> I promise you I'll be more careful next time. You know, but the point is we put our faith in men that we have never seen. Why is it now difficult to put all our lives in a God that we know that his word has never failed? A God we know his character that is a good God. A God we know his capacity that when he says the thing must come to pass. He said let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That's why God is stopping from unwavering. Without wavering for he is faithful that promised. Hallelujah. Can I say to somebody God is faithful that has promised. For that reason we can trust him. Why do you think Sarah was able to wait for the child? The Bible said she judged him faithful. Hebrews chapter 11. She judged him faithful that had promised. Even though she was old, she judged, she dared to believe. Thank you, Father. I want to say to some of you, every man that has ever made a great mark in his walk with God, every man, every man has ever made a major mark in his walk with God, Dead to trust God. He just dead. He just, they just made that attempt to trust him and trust his word. And I was watching a documentary yesterday of Pastor Yeah Deboy in Ara. This is a bad day and all that. And I saw that, you know, people just have to dare to trust. To trust God. When the call came, he, he was living a comfortable life. He was a lecturer in the University of Lagos. I mean, Lagos, I mean, but one of those he was a lecturer doing his PhD doing well. But he called the man dead, shutting down all of those things, carrying his bag, and relocating to a one-room apartment in the one-room apartment in the new church arena. That's what he needed to do. And they shut down, moved out from their two- to three-bedroom flat, packed everything, and walked, moved into one room, quit their job. Do you know, it takes one that can say, Father, I know your word has never failed. That's what I say we see men of God and the things they enjoy. We are complaining. Why is that man flying private jet? Did you trek with him? This, those things you see them fly are evidence of their trust in God. Say amen. Someone that just dared to take God by his word. And that's what you have to do. At this point, just dare. I want to see you in 30 years time telling your kids. You see, everything you see here, there was a day in service. I decided to trust God. I dared to put my faith in him. Doctor said I will not live for the past live past three years. But I dared to believe otherwise, to believe his word. Are you following me, church? And this one that will say to, the, to, say to his kids in 30 years' time. You see, 30 years ago, your father had nothing. He was broke, he was on the streets. No hope. But he, he put his trust in God and his God did not fail him. I will trust him. I judge him faithful. Because his word has never failed. It will never fail. Numbers 23 verse 19. You know I love this scripture very well. Numbers 23 verse 19. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number 23 and verse 19. God is not a man, say amen, that he should lie. In that the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it and shall he not do it? Had he spoken it, shall he not make it good? If he says it, he will do it. I want to ask you, what has God said to you? He will do it. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. <laughs> you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Say you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. Say you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Come on, come on, come on. Say you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. I am Alana. Say it. Say what you mean. Say you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Hey. Say you are Yahweh. Say you are Yahweh. Say you are Yahweh. And the Labataya. integrity he has integrity he has integrity come on now baba just take three minutes and pray let me allow you let me allow let me allow you my smile the atmosphere take three minutes and pray Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord. for 
a moment. We are coming back shortly. Just go. Now you are going back very shortly. We are going to pray like in 15 minutes. I just want to, I just want to finish what I have in my note here. So he has integrity. He has integrity. He has integrity. He has integrity. And that is why you can trust God. It's because he sees ahead of us. And he sees beyond what we can see. <laughs> God sees ahead of us. And God sees beyond what we can see. In Psalm 55 and verse 8. Thank you, Spirit of Jesus. Psalm 55 and verse 8. The psalmist we're going to write about. Okay. Next verse. Okay, no. I think it's Isaiah. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Yes, Isaiah 58 and verse 8. He said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Now, look at verse 9. This will encourage some of you. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In other words, God doesn't see how we see. He sees differently from us. Our idea of answer might not be his idea of answer. What you might be calling failure might be his success. Everybody please listen to me. What you might be calling delay might just be his process. Please follow me this morning. Most of them say, ah, I just lost that. That might be a deliverance, but you don't know. I was supposed to get that job, but I lost it. And somebody is wailing and mourning in his or her room. What she doesn't know is that that job was meant to be her end. <laughs> what she doesn't know is that there is someone certain has positioned strategically in that office to mess her life up. So by her losing the job was God delivering her. My ways are not your ways. Are you following me this morning? That's why I can trust him. That's why I can trust him. And I've seen this happen again and again. When some things happen, it looks like, ah, we lost everything, but God was just delivering. Can I give an example? Joseph. They threw the man to Egypt. Imagine you are Joseph. You just had a dream. That's what I told you. God cannot fail. What is the dream? God has promised you you be a great man. Two times you saw the first dream. Your corn was standing. Other corns were bowing down to it. Your own Agbado was standing. Other Agbado was bowing down to your Agbado. Number two, you see another dream where you know even the stars and all that were bowing down to you. And then shortly after that dream, what follows? You are sold into slavery. And to think that things you are getting, you know, it, it looks like you are getting better, they put you to the house of Potiphar, you became the leader. I was like, oh, Father, thank you, Jesus. I'm now in Potiphar's house. Oh, you did it. Maybe this is the, how you do it. And suddenly they accused you falsely. He had an option. To accept the, set, the compromise of Satan. Remember that? That compromise was Potiphar's wife. If you sleep with me, everything, this life will be soft. He rejected it. Went into prison. If you are Joseph in prison, and then maybe from prison, they allowed you to attend platform of grace. And when you came, pastor was saying, God does not fail. He said, leave that in. 14 years ago, he promised you that he would make me a king. Look at where I am in prison. And so they become king. But his ways are not our ways. They are higher than our ways. Right there in that prison, two men had a dream or had dreams. He interpreted the dreams to them. Told the other one, your own dream means they will kill you. Now, told the other person, your own dreams mean, dream means that very soon Pharaoh is going to exalt you. He now pleaded with the guy. Satan's compromise again. Please, once they exalt you, remember me in your kingdom. And the man, it happened just as Joseph said. Guess what? The man left and they remember him. Who's following me this morning? The man just left and forgot him. See, imagine you are Joseph. Just, I'd like you to take the next few seconds and put yourself in Joseph's shoe. From God promising you and assuring you that you'll be great, to you becoming a slave, to you entering prison, to everybody that was meant to help you, forsaking you and running away from you, turning their backs on you. But your faith must be in God. 
Joseph did not know that all that was part of the process. Some of the things you're crying about are not really disappointments. They're part of the process. Who is following what I'm saying? There was a time in this ministry, church, that we didn't have anything. We are not, we are not even playing. We are just very small. That lasted for some time. But you know, it is part of the process. That made us stronger. That made me stronger. So most times when you're praying and you're saying, ah, God has let me. Always remember his words are not your ways. Now, I've been talking about Joseph. Let me just show you what Joseph said. Genesis 45 verse 5. After everything has happened, when things are now better, Joseph now made a statement to his brothers. Look at this. He was telling the brothers, Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here. For God did send me here. At this point, Joseph has now learned that even though in the physical he was sent, he was sold, but in the spiritual, what happened was that God sent him here. Are you judged this morning? His ways will not be your way. See the next verse. God sent me here to preserve your life. For these two years are the farmer and been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be hearing or harvest, okay? And God sent me before you to preserve you, a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Do you know it was through Joseph that God made sure that the line lineage of Abraham did not wipe away? If Joseph had not gone ahead, all of them would have died in the famine. But God sent him ahead of time to Egypt to go and prepare the land to preserve them many years after. What looked like a total failure or hope dashed was God's method. See the next verse. See the next verse. So now, it was not you that sent me here. <laughs> you know, a man did a song what the enemy meant for evil. God has told it. it was not you. You guys think you sold me, but it actually it was not you. Sometimes you need to tell your boss, it was not you that sacked me. <laughs> it was not you that sent me out of work. It was not you that sent me here. It was God. Because currently, oh God, he has made me a father to Pharaoh. Glory to God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. And Lord of all his house. And they rule throughout all the land of Egypt. I want to encourage you to trust God. Because his ways are higher. Do you now understand why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 8. Had the prince of this world known. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What was God's purpose that Jesus will be king over all, all the earth? That he will be Lord of all. That he will be savior. That was God's intention. What did Satan do? Satan, first of all, offered him an alternative. The Bible said they gathered to make him king. Do you remember that place? The, the man walked so much miracle that they gathered to make him king. He ran away. Don't make me king. God, Jesus, Satan was saying, You want to be king? I have a faster route to kingship. They gathered and said, Ah, Jesus, 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 can I get so money? Let's make you king. Let's crown you now. Amen. And he left. He refused. Now, let's assume you are Jesus. We are assuming, Abi. When God was sending, he told you, you are going to be king. You are going to be great. And then, 33 years later, you are on your way to the cross. The beat shake come off of your eye. That's why I tell some of you that it is actually possible that what is happening in Nigeria today is part of God's process for bringing our answer to us. Are you getting me? So sometimes when people break their head, it's because they don't understand God. The man went to the cross. Imagine when he was hanging on the cross. If you had gone to Satan, I said, Satan, how are you feeling right now? He said, yeah, well, finally, what? He thinks it's bad rubbish he was doing. When I was in heaven, the man sent me down. He, he, he's seen it now. He's play, they play the show. Don't be, don't be joking. You can imagine the party that was going on in hell. As he hung on the cross. Are you following me, church? The process doesn't always look like it. God said, my ways are higher than your ways. So as they were having the party, dancing, eating, Satan was calling for more demons. Bring more pepper soup. And then suddenly the man gave up the ghost. And descended into hell. 
So imagine as they were eating, one spoon in the mouth and the king of glory was walking in. He dethroned him. He disarmed Satan. He defeated Satan. He took the battle to him. He brought him down. He shut him up. And what Satan thought was victory was his loss. Can I say to you, don't cry. Sometimes this is part of the process. Are you following me? What you call delay might just be God's process. But his ways are higher than your ways. Think of some things you lost a couple of years ago. And you cried and cried. Think of if you didn't lose those things. I, have you ever had anything like that? That you lost your time after crying. After two years saying, ah, thank God. Why was I even crying? My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I don't see how you see. I don't perceive how you perceive. I don't interpret things how you interpret it. <laughs> Someone needs to laugh in the storm. Someone needs to rejoice in the storm. Someone needs to scream in the storm. Someone needs to dance in the storm. Yeah. That's why Paul says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Why? What the devil thinks he's doing to hurt you. I just feel, and, and I like using you guys' jokes and all that. I just feel God looking at the devil saying, they play. Just they play. You think you are winning, just be playing. It's all part of the process. Now, I'm not saying that when you have pain in your life, you should enjoy it. Pray. They pick the devil, but never stop trusting God. The mess Satan is causing, God will turn it for good. <laughs> what Satan doesn't know is that if he delays the blessing for whatever reason in the process I'm going to be getting stronger so when I finally get the miracle I got two things I've gotten the miracle and I've learned how to be strong so it's a win-win you're not getting me this morning and in fact I have learned how to combat him better next time hallelujah Oh, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. Can I give you one more? You can trust God because He's powerful. There is nothing He cannot do. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. I am the God, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? <laughs> There is nothing you cannot do. There is no mountain Hang on. you cannot. If he has said it. If you have said it, then you will do it. Come on. You are hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, 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 yes. You're not about to stop to win. Hold on. Listen. I want to share a scripture. Job 26, verse 7. Because of our time, I want to really pray with you. So, because of our time, put a penalty. Please, everybody watch this. God stretches the northern sky over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. Continue. He wraps the rain in his thick clouds. And the clouds don't burst with the weights. Go and think about the scripture when you get home. He covers, come on, continue. He covers the face of the moon, shrouding it with his clouds. He created the horizon when he separated the waters. He set the boundary between day and night. The foundations of heaven trembled, they shudder at his rebuke. By his power, the sea grew calm. By his skill, he crushed the great sea monster. His spirits made the heavens beautiful. His power pierced the gliding serpents. I'll stop at 14. These are just the beginning of all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. Everything you see in creation is just a whisper of God's power. I want you to think of how powerful God is. The sky is hanging. Everything is a whisper. And I say, who then can comprehend the thunder of his power? 
that is a whisper of his power. When the thunder of his power now comes, do you know the thunder of his power has come? He unleashed all his power when he raised Jesus from the dead and saved us and made us new creation in Christ Jesus. We are the embodiment of his power. We are the product of all his power put together. The man that gave us Jesus can heal the sick. The man that gave us Jesus can raise the dead. There is nothing he cannot do. So we can trust him. I'll give you one last reason why I should trust him. Just one last one. Please write this and we'll start praying. He has a track record. He has a track record. During election seasons, we tell you to vote men that have track record. Abby. People that can tell you when I was a counselor, see what I did. When I was a chairman, see what I did. Now, before you trust anybody, you have to check the person's track record. Do I run you through God's track record? Do I run you through everything he has done? From Genesis 1. <laughs> he gave Jesus. Abraham trusted him. He didn't fail Abraham. David trusted him. He didn't fail David. Men have trusted him in the past. He didn't fail them. He has a track record of miracles. He has a track record of signs and wonders. He has a track record of never failing and keeping to his promise. He has a track record of, of always being right and always delivering. He has that track record. So why will it start changing when you came? <laughs> God has never failed. The next time you want to doubt God, check his track record. For your majesty, that's what guided my spirit. He's forever omnipotent one. I worship you for your majesty. Ooh. He's forever one. You know. When the Lord began to put in my heart to follow him, the way I'm doing, to give up everything and walk with him. You know, one of the things I checked was his track record. I checked what he has done for men that did the same thing in the past. I saw Abraham leave your father's house and follow me to a land I will show you. He didn't fail him. I saw many people. Then I began to look at our generation. I saw men in the past. I saw T.L. Osborne. Him and his wife abandoned everything at 19 i went to india for the purpose of mission i saw his life god didn't fail him i saw he had bunky left everything and came to lesotho africa in africa to serve and god gave him a blood washed africa god didn't fail him i saw men i saw in a boy i saw bishop i saw kenneth copeland i saw casey price casey price i saw all these men if god did not fail all of them am i a part of this Let me tell you, when I tell you sometimes that I know what tomorrow will look like, I'm not wishing myself well. I know whom I have believed. Hi, 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 hi. I know who I trusted. I didn't trust a man. We have not believed cunningly devised fables. We have not believed the theories that men bring. We trusted a God that has never failed anybody. There is a track record that a man has. He promises he delivers. He binds himself with his word. His word is what he binds himself. So why, why shouldn't I trust that kind of man? I don't know what I'm trusting God for. I want you to know. If I run you through God's track, just I don't have to. I wanted to run you through some things. If I run you through God's track record, the man brought some people, about three million people, brought them before Red Sea, taught the rest into two and they passed. That is the man that said you should trust him. The man that said you should trust him brought them to the wilderness. There was nothing to eat. He opened the heavens and rained down manna, physical, fully, fully prepared food. And they gathered and they ate. And he was coming down every day. In fact, he gave them a warning. Don't pack manna that you eat tomorrow. 
Because if you pack it tomorrow, it will spoil by tomorrow. Because in my plan and my ordination is that every new day I have a new manner for you. That's the man that said you should trust him. The man that said you should trust him. When they needed meat, he ran down quails. You know that quails? He ran down meat. Meat. Not just matter, meat and chicken. I like you to understand when God says trust me put all your eggs in my basket he knows what he says the man said they should trust him they needed water from rock he brought out water water began to flow not in the spirit by the spirit physically that's why I said they should trust him the man said they should trust him let three million people out of Egypt and not one of them was sick at the time he was leading them that man now says, trust me with your health. Are you following me? The man that said you should trust him. Made them promises and kept those promises. Do you know that even after Bible days, Israel as a nation was scattered all over the world. Do you know this? There was no nation called Israel till around 1948. But in the Bible, God had promised through Isaiah that a nation shall be born in a day. That one day he will gather the whole of Israel together. And one day in 1948, because of a promise in the word of God, the whole of Israel came together and the nation was formed in one single day. God read history. That is the man that said he should trust his words. If you know God, you will sleep. If you know God, you won't be worried. You can dare to trust him. I don't know how things are looking now. But I'm not the one that will doubt God. He didn't fail my forefathers. I come from a generation of men that have proved God over and over again. My spiritual father has proven God again and again. Sent out a ministry with nothing. With nothing. God didn't fail him. You get the point? I am from that lineage. God does not fail us here. Are you getting me? I come from the generation of word of faith. You can't read about the word of faith, guys. I'm proudly word of faith. I just want to tell you. Proudly word of faith. You can't read about the word of faith, guys. You can't read about Kenneth E. Hagen. Read about Kenneth Copeland. Whatever you say about them is your business. Read about Kenneth Copeland. Read about Freddie Casey Press. Read about Bill Winston. These men live their life. Read about TLOs when they live their life trusting God. They will tell you how to get your things. Is Name it. Claim it. And they sat down, started naming and claiming until all the name that they claimed became theirs. It's about all our robots. Ah. The man built a university, a robots university, the first. The first. And one day, another man in Nigeria arose. His name was Bishop Ohidebo, who began to read about our robots university and started to travel to Square City University for himself firsthand. He got there, he climbed to the highest point of the university and looked around everywhere. Ah, and he told himself, it can happen anywhere. Then he made a second statement. He said, you don't have to be white to be right. <laughs> and then he came back to Nigeria. And that is Covenant University. That is a landmark university because a man dared to trust God. Don't fight men that have proven God. Their lives are a proof that God has never failed and he will not fail you. I didn't get the point. And I'm talking about men of God that are known. But I have some other guys that are not even pastors. Believers who are just there. So if I've mentioned some messages, I just want to mention, I don't want to mention because we are streaming these things. But I know some top class businessmen in this country, some of them in the first 10, some of them came from very broken homes very poor background. One of them I like talking about a lot. He did not even attend a single school. He went to do apprentice like his friends and came out. But he was a believer. He began to prove God. If you pray about the first five richest evil men alive, he's one. I'm not talking about 100 million. I'm talking about money. I get the point. But he proved God. That's in finances. What of health? Well, I've proven him. I've told about Creflo Dollar. How they told him 
you have prostate cancer. He said, prostate, what is the prostate cancer? He said, ah, give me a time, I'm coming. He went back, shut down everything for one week. And let the barrel get the bush. The life of God is working in me. I cannot be sick. Cancer has no place in my body. After one week, he went back to the hospital and said, doctor, try me again, test me again. They tested him. They saw nothing wrong with him. That is the God that says you should trust, trust him. People have proven him. The man has a track record of having never failed anybody. For that man, or oh God, I've explained to you, I will trust my whole life into his hand. I will put all my eggs in his basket. I will refuse every alternative. I will refuse to worry. I will refuse to complain. I will trust him with everything. Though it looks like he has failed me, but I know he has not failed anybody, so he will not start with me. Though it looks like my answers did not come as I expected this, but I'm going to trust him. So my soul, why are you downcast? Rejoice and have hope. For I shall yet praise him who is the lift of my countenance. I want to challenge you. We have a whole life to trust God. I'm talking about many men today. I'd like you to make up your mind today that one day you will be a living proof of trusting God. I said that to myself yesterday night. Henry, you will be someday Somebody is going to write a book about you. Somebody is going to act movies about you. Somebody is going to make documentaries about you. All they are trying to do is to encourage people to trust God. I am going to be a living proof of faith in God. Yes, we know he has never failed. He will not fail through the cross. What he did for us on the cross and salvation. He delivered us and all that. But I want to be an extra proof to men that God will not fail. There is nothing you cannot do. Stand to your feet. There's no mountain. There's no mountain. You cannot. Do. I can't finish my message. Let me just we'll go, start from here next week. Come on. You will do it. Woo! You have a track record of keeping your word. Let's chant it again and again and again. You're not you are going to play. This song is on the screen. Do it again. There is nothing, there is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain, there's no mountain you cannot move. Woo. If you have saved, come on, church, let me hear you. You have a track record singing now. You have a track record. Sing it again. Say, there is nothing. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no mountain. There is no mountain you cannot move. If you are saved, then you will do it. Say there is nothing there is nothing If you do this to heaven Sing it like you know what you are saying Everybody come out If you are saying If you are saying But you have a job Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to leave you only 
pray one prayer. You're going to lift up your hands and say to God, Father, today I am making a decision to trust you completely. I want to put all my lives in you, all my life, you and all my business, my health, my future. I don't want to trust man. You are my trust. It's a prayer of dedication. I've chosen to trust you. All my intentions just pray. All my obsessions I want to lay them all down in your hands. Only your love is vital. Though I'm not entitled Still you call me your child Here I am All my intentions All my obsessions I want to lay them all down In your hands Only your love Till you call me your child And God you don't need me But somehow you want me Oh how you love me Somehow the freeze me to take My hands off of my life And where he should go Say oh God You don't need me But somehow yeah. Oh, how you love me Somehow the freeze me to open my hands up And give you control Lift your hands to heaven, Father I know we have a lot of expectations from you But this one thing we are saying to you this morning We choose to trust I choose to trust You are my anchor Let's do that song. There is hope in the promise of the cross. You gave everything to save the world you love. And this hope is an anchor for my soul. Our God will stand. Father, is our commitment. We put our faith in you. In the one that gave us Jesus. We put our faith in the one that loved us and loves us. Put our faith in the one that has never failed. We put our faith in the one that is all powerful. We put our faith in the one that has a track record of working miracles and never failing. We put all our faith and our confidence in you. We refuse to trust man. We refuse to trust our strength. We repent of places and times that we've not trusted you enough. And we offer ourselves to trust you again and again. We know you will deliver the answer. We know you will bring the job. We know you will bring the wealth. We will know you will bring the divine health you want. We know you will bring the supply we are looking for. We know you will bring the peace that we need. We know you will bring the relationships that we want. We know that you will put our lives in perfect shape. We know that no matter what the devil is doing, everything is going to turn out fine. We know that you've never failed and you will not fail us. We know that you've never failed and you will not fail us. We know that you will not disappoint us. We know that you are reliable. We know that you have integrity. We know that you have fidelity. We know that we can put our faith in you and go to rest. A 
for that reason, we put all our eggs in this basket. We put all our faith, all our trust, all our faith, all our hope in you. That no matter what happens, at the end of our lives, we will be living proofs of trusting you. We will be living proofs of putting our faith in you. We will be living proofs that you cannot fail. We will be living proof that you always stay true to your word. We will be living proof that there is really a God that you that will never fail. We will be living proof to the fact that you heal all sicknesses. We will be living proof to the fact that you provide the force that we need. We will be living proofs, oh, we will be living proofs of the fact that you have never failed any man. We will say to our children, God did not fail us. Who said to our loved ones, God did not fail us. We will be living proofs of, of, of your faithfulness.
man is not my hope. My present job is not my hope. The present money in my account is not my hope. The present connections I have, they are not my hope. You are my hope. You are my hope. You are my hope. So I trust you. So I trust you. So I trust you. So I trust you. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You bring the healing. I sense heavy angelic activities here. If you're here and I spoke about you and you're sick of any sickness that's proven stubborn. Please put your hands up. Whether I spoke about it or not, but then the person I spoke about should also put his hands up. Put his hands up. Any sickness in your body that's proven stubborn. Please up very well. I want to see you. Father, put it up. I just obeyed the instruction. Put it up. I want to see you. There are angels here, and you have to follow instructions whenever angels are walking. Spirit of Jesus, run through this place. Arrest every sickness. That which has been called terminal. That which has been declared impossible. That which has been declared not possible. Let your healing power surge through this meeting. And cut off every sickness. Cut off every pain. Cut off every infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Angels begin to walk on these ones. Conduct surgery where there is need. Replace what needs to be replaced. Correct what needs to be corrected. Fix what needs to be fixed. The diseases of the heart are disappearing in this moment. In the name, if you have any issue with your heart, please put your hands up very well. I said the Holy Ghost saying this of the heart, things that have to do with your heart. God is uprooting and fixing those things. In the name of Jesus, every sickness is uprooted from this place. I declare your healing has come now. The God that you put your faith in, the God that you've trusted, is coming through this moment. Removing every sickness, removing every pain from your body. And I declare you healed. Your next test is negative. Your next test is negative. Your next test is negative. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's done. It's done. Let's lift our hands and give Jesus praise. If you believe that God has answered. Throughout this month, I'll be te taking you on this teaching again. I'm going to strengthen your heart. You will leave this month ready to trust God. Bring down your hand. Let me just say this to you as I close. I know when I made my decision, and every day I redo that decision, that I was going to trust God. Not anything. I had many reasons not to, but I started to trust God. And I can tell you sincerely, it's paying off. I don't have everything I want now, but I now have everything I need. I will definitely. The little things I've seen in my life now are a proof that many, many more things will happen. Hallelujah. God is your source. Let him be your hope. Let him be your confidence that everything will work out fine. Don't let man be that confidence. I wanted to take us on some things that will happen when you begin to trust God. I'll, I'll open up with that next Sunday. Okay, so I'll just close here now. But put your faith and confidence in God. And throughout this month, by next week, I'll be going to show you more things about how you can do these things. How practical steps or how you can make God your resolute, your resolute hope. Get the point. Hey, your, your final, final choice. First, second, third final choice will be to trust God. So that whatever Satan steals from your life will not break you down. Because that thing was never your trust. Or whatever your, was never your hope or your source. Hallelujah. Say with me, say, I trust God. Say it again. Shout it again. And now say it again. 
So I trust God. I trust God. He will never fail me. He has never failed me. I trust him too much to fail. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Hallelujah. God bless you. Before you sit down, just please package your offering very quickly. Put up that number on the screen so that we can make a declaration once and for all. Omnipotent one. Just to play that song on the background. To forget your offering. Sing it again. So use that account number on the screen and give your offering. Do it again. Omnipotent one. Omnipotent one. I worship for your majesty is forever. You see, that sister that gave that testimony about having some panic attacks at night. That stuff has ended forever. The Lord said I should say something about that. It will never return again. I mean, the particular demon responsible for that has been sent packing from now. In the name of Jesus. It will never return again. In Jesus' name. So have you sent your offering? Let's turn to our feet. Let's make some declaration. Put it up on the screen quickly. Are you ready? Everybody up your, up, up your feet. Never give without releasing words. So once we give, it's an opportunity for us to release words. And I'm, I'm going to have us all declare it together from the screen. Are you ready? I'm speaking for me. You're speaking for me. So I'm not leading you to talk now. I'm just talking and I'm talking. Let's go, everybody. I'm blessed. I have abundance. My debts are being cleared. And they disappear totally. My needs are met. At every point in my life, my supply is bigger than my needs. I always have what to give. I always have what to spend. I always have much more left over. Why? Because I'm blessed. I'm getting my houses. I'm getting my lands. I'm getting my cars. I'm getting my properties. Everything I need to do life in a godly way, they are mine. Because I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm lending to nations. I borrow from none. But the Lord my God has given me the power to make wealth. Hallelujah. So, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say amen, somebody. You believe those words? So, you are blessed. God bless you. Be seated as I'm giving you offering. I want to welcome you to church this morning. Now, thank you for coming. If this is your first time of joining us, I want to say thank you. We love the fact that you came. This is the Exalted Platform Church. This is a platform of grace. Enugu. We have a vision. Our vision as a church family is to raise a people who have knowledge of God's word, who flow in the things of the Spirit and who are committed to ministry. So I want to thank you for joining us today. And I uh, really hope to see you next time. If it's your first time of joining us, we'll just take your name and your phone number. Because of service. We'll just wait a little, just a few minutes, just your name and your phone number. We keep praying for you and hoping that you join us next time. Our service days. At 8.30 a.m. as you join us today, Thursdays, 5 p.m. Don't be missing Thursday services. And Saturdays, 2 p.m. Evangelism and prayer meeting. Of course, if you have your kids, bring them to our children's church. If you start bringing your kids to our children's church, give them three months. They would have improved in everything. And I'm telling you with everything, a lot I know. If the church is not doing well, just bring them to children's church. The word of God steps up our IQ. And I tell you, I've seen it happen with many kids here. And it's going to happen much more with your kids. Amen. So bring your kids around for their own service. They always have a good time. Too. And to tell you something, our children's church is not what it is in many other places. I pay attention to our children's church. What I mean is, I personally go through everything that I taught every Sunday, before Sunday comes. So it's not like a place that we just pick anybody that is jobless to go and teach them. 
we pe I personally ordain the people that are teaching them. So we take that very seriously. So your kids are being taken care of. Amen. So I want to thank you for coming. Now, Singles Connect is coming. Now, what Singles Connect is, if you are single here, that meeting is for you. I'll be teaching and answering questions on relationships. We've been announcing 25th of March, but, but there's a little change. Singles Connect we hold on 26th of March, a Sunday. That's the last Sunday of this month. So we come to service in the morning, have a very fast service that day, then we'll return by 3.30 p.m. that evening for Singles Connect. Are you excited? Why we put it on the evening so that we can be sure nobody has anything doing? You don't have work, you don't have lecture, you don't have, and the friends you are inviting don't have anything doing. So that evening, the way you would have gone to relax, maybe to watch football match or whatever, you just come here and we're going to have a very great time. The dress code is business casual. Do you know what that means? Uh -huh. So business casual means you are not supposed to come. Don't be too serious. But don't look stupid. So I don't expect you to come on a tie and a suit. It's a, it's, a, it's a Sunday evening. But I don't just expect to walk in here with your slippers like you, you, like you missed your way. Amen. So what am I saying? A jean is good, but a jean on a shoe, a polo or shirt, just something good. Don't be too casual, but don't be too serious. Because it's an evening we're going to have a good time. So it's going to be a great time. We'll see him as it begins to approach. Please pay attention. Amen. Now, PGTI. If you have... No, let me tell you what PGTI is. PGTI is... Please pay attention to this announcement. This is one of the most better announcements today. Platform of Grace Training Institute. Now, it's a training that every member of this church should go through. Now, over the years, last year, last two years, how we've been doing it is we get a full week and then you have to attend throughout the week. But we realize that many people get very busy, they won't be able to do that. So we come up with a new structure and the structure we've been working with since the year started to make sure that everybody participates is that PGTI, we hold every second Sunday of the month. So a particular set already started last month. Okay, so every second Sunday of the month, one hour after service, you stay back, you are taught. Next month, you come back for the second study. Next two months until you are done. I get the point. So, if you've not done a PGTI, get your form. And in case you don't know, it's totally free. All you just need is your time and availability. If you pass through that training, you will see why. We have a vision here. We want you to know God's word very strongly and for yourself. So, the forms, usher, you have the forms already. So, that if you need those forms... Make sure you pick them for the end of service because next by next Sunday, a new set will be entering too. Other people have filled for me. You said to be starting next Sunday. And people that started last, last week or last month rather, you have your second class this coming Sunday. So remember to do your assignments, submit and all that. It's a full training, something that will bless you and make you very solid in your work with God. You should want to grow spiritually. Amen? And we are here to offer you that spiritual growth. If you have passed through PGTI, let me see your hand. A couple of us here. So, make sure you pass through PGTI. Get the best out of it. Amen. Okay. Um, now, new announcement. We, in January, we said, we talked about our land project, remember? And many of us have been asking questions as per how do we remit the land project commitments that we made. Now, uh, we, we said we're getting another account number, but for now, you can use the regular account number you use for your offering. Just that once you send it in, make sure you, you in your narration, explain that this is for land projects. You understand? Yeah, just narrate this is land project money. So all the land project money should come in. Put up the account number, please. We are getting our land this year. Amen? And God told us that and we are going to get it. So we are getting our land this year. So the account number is the same. Some of us pledged heavy amount of money. And I tell you, and it's, it's amazing because as that the end of January, many people were already calling to ask for their account number. And that was very exciting for me because it meant that God was already providing for you. Amen. And I tell you, this account number, if you pledge the million or 500k or whatever, you mustn't give it once. If you have your 100k, send it in. If you have 200k, send it in. See, it is done. But what I want to encourage you, if you're a member of this church, make sure you're part of this land project. Make sure you're part of it in whatever way you can. So that finally when we get it and all our needs are met, 
We can, you can tell people, who, and my money is inside this place. Amen. So, and I tell you, every time we begin to do a heavy project in church, expect heavy supply too. Are you getting me? Why? God cannot, God, God cannot ask me to tell the church to raise hundreds of millions for a land. And he will not provide money for the church members. It's not possible. I get what I'm saying. So it's because he will provide us, I will do it. So as he keeps providing for you, give big towards this. I strongly believe that before the end of this, I'm targeting August self, that the land is already ready. So use this account number for all your giving. Just make sure you state you narrate. Once you are done with your land project commitment, let me know. I have a prayer, a special prayer session with you. Amen. Okay, um, of course, the book for this month is Letters to My Heart. Letters to My Heart is a book that God asked me to write for this season. So the book is outside. Get yourself a copy. Get yourself a copy. Get that copy for a friend too. That's the book we are studying this month. So it's just out there so you can get it. And all the all other of my books, God You Never Knew, Prayer Force, um, Take Heed, Beholding Jesus, all of that, 30 days of answered prayers, all of them are there so you can get them and they will bless you. Every week, we have a message for the week. The message for this week is homologio. Amen. So you have to listen to it throughout this week and let it steer your feet. Amen. So it's on the site. My website is there. HenryHedekachi.com It's totally free. Go there, download the messages and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Of course, workers, you know I have a meeting with you after this service that you cannot miss. Of course, my office is um, open today, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay, so his office is open on Tuesday and Wednesday. Some of you that after service, not today rather. Some of you after service, you come here to see me after service. It's not always easy for me and for you. So that's why I'm always here on Tuesday and on Wednesdays. So if you want to see me, you can just talk to the uh, secretary or to the office assistant, pick up a form, fill up the form, tell them why you want to see me. Even if you are not able to fill up the form, come here. I'm here on Tuesday and Wednesday. Especially if you come here between 12 and 5, I'm here. If you come here after 5, you will not see me. Amen. Say amen. I also have family. I have to go back to my own family. Amen. So 5 o'clock, we are done. But if you're already here by 5 p.m., maybe because there are many people, I'm going to see you. But you cannot walk here by after five at expect it seems. I'm just saying that you should know that. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays I'll be here. I want to see, I want to listen to you, I want to pray with you, I want to rejoice with you. So if you want to see me, you come around, I'll be here on Tuesday and on Wednesday. Amen. Of course, um it's a new month. Amen. Amen. Oh. And um every month we announce the highest soul winner for the previous month hallelujah i said hallelujah how do we know that there is a link that we use whenever we win souls so we expect that once you win souls you fill up that form look at the number of souls we want today and all that if it is difficult for you to fill we'll come up with something else but based on the record we gathered we had tens of souls won this week this last month hallelujah and there is the highest soul winner for the month. For the month of February. Should we announce? Should we announce? Guess who the person is? Amen. The highest soul winner for the month of February is still Sister Jennifer. Namde. Amen. So she won it for the month of January. She has won it for the month of February. We are in March. Make a difference in your generation. But much more, we have to encourage you, and I'm encouraging you to. I know some of us are winning souls. She might not be the highest soul winner. But according to our record, she is. Amen? While we are taking the record, we want to know how many souls we are winning every month. So once you win souls, you fill that form and you submit it. So, Sister Jennifer, come, let us speak words over you and pray for you. To whom much is given? Much is expected. And when the guy with five talents got another five talents, they added the talents of the other foolish person to him. Whatever that means for you, it is what it is. Let us pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for soul winning. Thank you for giving us the hearts to win souls for you. 
and I bless your daughter. And I say that even in this few months, there are more souls won by your hands. Much more effectiveness, much more results. And we will do better in our work with you. In Jesus' name, amen. On record so far, God bless you. We have about 57 souls won in the month of February. On record so far. What do we do about that? Let me try that again. On record, we have about 57 people won to the Lord in the month of February. Now, they were, it's, not that, it's not sickness. They were in darkness and they have been turned to light. So what do we do about that this morning? What do we do when souls are one? We rejoice. Glory. Hallelujah. And I tell you, this new month we are going to win. We are going to do more than a hundred souls this new month. Is that possible? So on Saturday, you come out by 2 p.m. We go out. We win souls for Jesus. Amen. You will see the record by first Sunday in April. Not April full. Amen. It will be a great time. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Let's close service. Why are you blessed today? Amen. Stand your feet. <laughs> you know? Glory to God. It's another election week. And as your pastor, I will talk to you again. Amen? Go and vote. Do you understand me? Just do your part. That's all I wanted to do. Just do your part. And I don't know why I want to talk to some people. Some of you that are presiding officers in this church and electoral officers and all that. Now, save yourself some trouble. I know you are a good person and I trust you too much to know that you will not compromise. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. When you are living, I'm saying this, some of you are, are doing an election, whatever. When you are living there in neck office, be sure everything they gave you is working. If it's not working, don't go. Nigerians are angry. Don't go and bear the sins of Mahmoud Yakub. I like know what I'm saying. Test everything they give you. Be sure it's working. Be sure you know how to operate the Beaver's machine. Be sure you know how to upload. Carry extra data. In case they say, I'm telling you, prepare yourself. Nothing will happen to you, but I'm just saying, don't be foolish. You get the point? Because I know the last election, many presiding officers have suffered for things they know nothing about. Because some of them, it wasn't their fault in any way. I heard some of them got wrong passwords from the INEC office. Very terrible system. But that God will punish you. But then, don't be a victim of that. I get to the point. Get your things. And I'd like everybody to calm down. There'll be no violence in this election. Satan will not drink more blood in this election. There will be no that people that want to orchestrate violence between Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there will be many arrests. People that want to orchestrate violence. Take it from me. Believe it totally. I get to the point. So go and vote. Go take your vote. Do your best. And just go and rest. Hallelujah. God has blessed you. Now share with your neighbor what blessed you the most in this service. Share with your neighbor what blessed you the most in this service. What's the person saying? What did you learn? What bless you the most? Prove to the person that you did not waste your time in service. You can introduce yourself to the person. This is my name. This is what I learned. This is what blessed me the most. Hallelujah. Grab your neighbor's sons quickly. Come on, sing it like nobody else.
I'm standing on the exalted platform. I am standing on the platform of God's grace. I have knowledge of the word. I flow in the things of the spirit. I am committed to ministry. I trust God. My hope is in God. He has never failed and he will not fail me. God bless you. Please love someone before you leave this meeting. I'll see you on Thursday. Say something beautiful to someone before you go. Thank you. The expression, you guys are looking fine. We are wearing the same. We are wearing the same uniform. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>